Welcome to another exciting episode of the Million Dollar Peddlers. I'm Paper Goy. Someone reached out to me via eBay. I was not a subscriber, unfortunately. Um, like and subscribe. And they reached out to me from a listing that I had for correct English, how to use a lot of magazines and books from the 1890s, 1900s, a lot of 21. Now that has been up there for quite a while for me. Um, years, as a matter of fact. Just a lot of stuff that wasn't worth selling by itself that I put all together. They reached out to me because they had some correct English magazines and they had a bunch of other magazines from the early 1900s through about the 1930s. Uh, they also had things that are like New York Times uh, newspapers. And they sent me a few pictures and it looked interesting. It looked like the kind of thing that I would like to buy at the right price uh, because this is the kind of thing that I enjoy listing. Certainly will not fly off the shelves. Uh, the gentleman asked me for some tips on it. You know, what do I do with selling this? Well, I always try to be fair to people. I always try to, uh, to take into account what they want. And I asked him, I said, well, it depends. Do you want maximum money or what are you looking for? And he goes, yep, I want maximum money. And I chuckled to myself as I sent him uh, my little notes about it. And basically, then you're gonna wanna list them individually but it's going to take a long, long time. Um, the other problem he's going to have is with the magazines, it's not a big deal. You, you buy some supplies, you buy some padded envelopes, you buy some cardboard and, and uh, magazine bags, you're fine. The newspapers, uh, depending on how thick they are, how oversized they are, you wind up having to buy special envelopes. Uh, I do not know how many newspapers he has uh, or boxes, depending upon you know how big they are, how if they're folded to start with. And it got me thinking there are so many different things that go into running a business that it's second nature for somebody like um, me just for having done it for so long. But somebody new starting out, say he's got 500 New York Times magazines. How much money does he invest in supplies? How quickly will he get them up? Let's say magically he can get all 500 of them listed. Well, at some point he's gonna need 500 bags and 500 of the large size uh, craft envelopes or whatever he's using to send them out. But if he goes and invests in all of the supplies first, he's gonna be very, very distraught because it's not like these items are gonna fly off the shelves. Uh, did all the other magazines he had. They were neat magazines, but in order to get maximum dollar out of them, you're gonna sit on them. Some of those he's gonna sit on five to eight years. Is he prepared to do that? I don't know. Um, I've just begun talking with him uh, on things. What I hope that he does is after he realizes the difficulty uh, involved in listing, he gives me a count of things. We can reach a price. He lists it up on eBay in one lot and I can buy the lot and have him send it to me. That would be the best of all worlds because I'm set up in order to maximize the profit out of his lot. He's not. He has zero positives, uh, just joined eBay and probably has dollar signs dancing in his eyes because he says, oh my gosh, I can get 20 bucks each out of these. I can get $15 each, I can get $30 each. Yes, you can, eventually. Uh, but right now you have zero positives, you have no supplies. Um, don't want to dissuade them. But last I knew as well, eBay would only let you list five items in the first month. He's talking about a long, long period of time before he will be able to sell through that entire collection. I wish him well. Uh, certainly don't mind the competition as far as things go. But it's one of those things that it is kind of eye-opening because again, a collection like that, if that were local uh, and I were able to, to just pick it up off somebody's table at a sale, I wouldn't think twice about it. I'd be like, yeah, here's what he wants for the things. You know, he's, and I, again, I do not know how much stuff this gentleman has. Uh, he picked it all up in, a, in an estate somewhere. But okay, this guy's got 200 items. I'm giving him 250 bucks uh, you know, at a local sale. I bring it on home. I can get that stuff listed and sell it as a matter of course. I'll be out of it within a couple of weeks. Won't even notice when the rest of it sells and, and, and that's kind of the long tail business. Uh, how many people are prepared to start doing a long tail business? How many people that have never done eBay before even begin to understand? Uh, sometimes in the Bolo videos, I'll bring up something that's really not a Bolo at all something or other that I listed in 2008. I've had the items up for 16 years and I finally sell. Is this gentleman willing to take that amount of time and wait? I don't know, I, I really don't know. And again, I do wish him well. I will help, help him as best as I can. Um, 
try not to dissuade them, try not to scare them away uh, by any means, because again, in order for eBay to thrive, we need a lot of good sellers with good things, bring in the buyers, and it helps all of us. Uh, the old rising tide raises all ships. I, I absolutely 100% believe that, and I have no problem at all with other people wanting to learn how to sell. That's, you know, that's fine. That being said, it's not easy, and I think back to when I was starting out, granted, part of it was I was younger. There was that level as well, but not that I was ever hot-headed, but I didn't deal well with, with people, with the problems, I guess would be the way to, I, to say, that come in with eBay. You know, it's like, that wasn't ripped when I sent it to you. You know, now it would just be like, okay, send it back for a full refund. You know, but back then I was counting my pennies and, and you know, I, I knew that the item I sent out was not as they're saying that it is. And, you know, I, I would get upset. And until you've been on for a while, you, you really do take those things personally and you really, really do get upset about things. So it really is a learning curve to be able to get on and sell things. And again, it never really, really occurred to me until I was sitting there um, giving a little bit of guidance to this gentleman. Um, again, wish him the best, but I think he's gonna bite off more than he can chew as a new seller if he thinks that he's gonna be able to get top dollar out of the items he has. Um, it's, it's tough, Mar paper is fun, there's a lot of it out there, but it is a tough market. I'm not going to lie to you. It, it certainly is a tough market, and I've been doing it for, you know, ever, basically. And I have an idea what to buy from doing it forever. You know, between all the various sites, I've sold probably 150,000 items. It's a lot of stuff to move through my hands. I, I kind of have an idea what will sell or what I think will sell. Um, this gentleman doesn't. He just has a whole bunch of stuff that he picked up. Does he know how to describe it with condition? Does he know what to look for? Does he know how to note it? I don't know, probably not, uh, only as he's never done it before. So do wish the gentleman uh, a lot of luck. Um, don't believe he'll end up getting maximum dollar out of every item that he has, but hopefully he is able to do so. And I want you to sit back for a moment and just think about how much it, it, it's entailed. You know, you've got to have a, a camera of some sort or a scanner of some sort. Now, granted, we all have it on our phones, but how good of a listing is he going to be able to put up to start with on the, uh, on the phone if, if that's what he chooses to use, uh, especially with the pictures and all that? Does he know what people are looking for? Does he know that on this, the corner is important, that on this, it's important to note on the times whether all the sections are there or not. On this, it's important to note this, that it's important to take a run through and check to make sure there's no clippings, that it's important that this is going to be the keyword for this, and so on and so on. Probably not. Um, I do see listings of mine that sell that I listed two, three years ago, and I say, oh, I messed up. I should have used that keyword. What was I thinking? What was I doing? And I've been doing this forever, and I still am learning all the time and still messing things up. So starting off at ground zero would, would be really, really difficult, let alone how much money do you invest in packing supplies and the like. So if that gentleman happens to be watching, good luck to you. Do let me know how it turns out and know that you've got somebody that if you ever do decide to wholesale things out, you can always reach out to me and we'll, we'll work out a deal, um, hopefully. Uh, good luck to you and good luck to everybody out there. Again, it's, it's a lot of work that we all put in. Uh, don't believe the people, don't believe the hype, as, uh, as they say, public enemy says. Um, you're not just gonna go out and turn pennies into dollars without a lot of work along the way. Uh, the get-rich-quick people, now most of them moved on to, to greener pastures, but there's probably a few of them still out there hawking that. Don't believe it. It's a, it's a lot of work no matter what you're selling. Uh, hit the like button, and we'll see you next video.